if it fails, we upgrade. So, as you saw from last week's video, we were busy with making these cupboards, the bed base and all the rest of it, just to tidy everything up, hide the water tank, get the bed all trimmed up, ready to mount all my axes and things like that along the back of it, and we've just made a cupboard that puts all the electrics in. While we are here, there has been a bit of a failure. This is why we upgrade. So in this corner here, we've got the cables ready to go to the battery at the front, from the battery to battery charger. The cables that go to the lights and stuff, they go into the wall and do their thing. And then here we have the Chinese diesel heater, which you can see has leaked diesel on the floor and deteriorated it. So you have to go. What we've got, it was dead simple. You've got the air in and exhaust underneath. You've got the diesel in, which goes underneath, crap pipe. Uh, and then we've got, this goes to the control unit and this goes to the fuse board for power. That's gonna come out uh, because we're just basically, they are great as a budget item. If you haven't got heat in your van and you haven't got a great deal of budget for heat in the van, they are absolutely fantastic. However, with this Sprinter build, it's this is the first time in my life I'm going pure quality, if I can, where I can. So that served a purpose for last winter. Now we're gonna fit the quality kit, which is the auto term kit. I have been sent out these two boxes and I don't know what's in them yet. So the UK auto term, obviously they are the experts. So I told them a dilemma. They've put me a couple of boxes together, so I'm gonna open them up and see what I've actually got. So, in the first box we have, I have never seen one of those before. That is an insulated section, it looks like for your exhaust, which, what a nice little touch that is. I just put my finger in there, I wonder if that's like lagging and I'm gonna be itchy. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Until you fit a few of these, you don't really appreciate little things like the cable and the waterproof connectors and things so these can be fitted to the bottom of your vehicle and um, i don't know any any others that do that um, so everything's waterproof heat shrinked just that nice little touch better than what you normally get so that's for the exhaust that's your air in cold air in we've got a fuel pump down here which is one of the silent ones so in my old middle age i'm getting the uh, a little bit boring, I'm getting excited about a silent fuel pump for some reason. There is a million and one lovely little sealed packages, which I'm getting a little bit into this, but normally with the Chinese ones, everything's just launched in the box and it'll do. So it's the little things that kind of reassure you for quality. And then that looks like the heater in there. So let's get a few of these bits out of there. So as you can see, the units are of a similar size, which is really handy. So I'm gonna unbolt this from the vehicle now, because obviously this has got a ring turret that goes down through the vehicle. We're gonna replace that unit, fit the exhaust and the air in and the diesel underneath. And then we've just got these cables here, which there's actually more cables, but it can't be that hard. And I'm really looking forward to this because as you've seen when I went to the Pyrenees up into the mountains, those trailers did have these heaters in and they were banging. So after 12 months, this has already started to deteriorate. It's not very good cable. And this is what's supplied with the auto term one. So as you can see, far higher quality on every aspect. Ah, wow, that's big. That's what she said. <laughs> that is some size ducked in that, isn't it? I ain't getting that black mamba out just yet. I'll be scaring people. Right, so I've got the old heater out now, so that's nice and clear. So all I'm doing, I'm just familiarising myself with all the parts. Um, I mean, there is a million and one YouTube videos on how to do this, but I'm just having a look myself for a second. This is the turret that goes through the vehicle. I've already got one of these on the old unit, so same diameter. Um, one little nice touch is this has got a rubber, gr rubber grommet on it where the fuel line actually goes through, rather than having a separate hole through your floor, which is a nice touch. So, that just mounts on there. I'm gonna get the four nuts now, tighten these on, and then what I like to do is um, put the actual exhaust and everything on now, and then I'll feed that down through the vehicle itself, 
uh, and then attach the exhaust where it's needed. The reason I do that is because once this is through the vehicle, it's an absolute ball bag to then get up there with the little clamps and everything and get your little fat fingers in there. So last thing you want is to damage one of your hostages. I know this looks like an admin grenade, but basically I've put everything out so you can see it. And it looks like there is a lot, a lot of stuff here, a lot of clips, a lot of fastenings. And on other kits, it is just all one big bag. The beauty of this is everything has come almost idiot proof. So if you're fitting, say, your exhaust, we can go here and we've got the muffler, which on the Chinese one, I could squeeze this and crumple it. This is hard as nails. You've got the clips and it is labeled muffler. Then again, 9022. Mounting kit of exhaust pipe and heater. Nice and easily labelled, okay? I've got the fuel pump here, but then I've also got air intake mounting kit, so it's not that. <laughs> that goes with that, okay? Uh, what's this one here? This one is mounting kit of fuel system. So that is this one. So once you start to break it down, that you've got exhaust with the exhaust with the exhaust, it starts to become very, very easy. That's the air in, that's your fuel in, and then you've got some connections, which again, everything is labelled up, so it is quite idiot proof. Location, location, location. So you can get a bracket that fits this under your vehicle. You can also get a box that goes under your, under your vehicle, and these do come in different sizes. Me personally, I do wade through water. I am not putting a heater under my vehicle because it's gonna get submerged. I know it's gonna get submerged. Just like the water tanks on board, that's not going underneath because I know it can freeze. Just like I'm not going to tap into the diesel tank because I don't want to mess with the diesel system and I like to see what fuel I'm using. So I'm going to do an external one that I can get to just here. Let's have a look at how we're going to do this. You can get different sizes supplied by Autoterm. This is the one that's replacing what I've got. And any discrepancies in the floor, where you're mounting it, anything like that, any corrugations anything this kind of is forgiving i'm all right with that because i'm just going straight through the floor so as you can see that will just drop into that hole there and basically you've got a cold side which is next to the diesel intake and you've got a hot side okay so you can see that that's the hot side with the heat sinks and everything on and that's the cold side with the fan we'll come back to that so the next step is basically I've added the exhaust, added the air in and added the fuel. And basically what we can do now is just drop this through the van in the pre-cut hole um, from the previous heater. It's a dope piece of <clears throat> to do this yourself, um, to cut the hole in. It is very, very daunting. Just when you cut the hole out, just make sure you deburr it, um, just rub the edges off and all the rest of it and put some primer or paint or something protect that metal because it will rot through. As well as that, you can seal around underneath and all the rest of it. Luckily, with this floor, um, it's all rubberized, which makes one hell of a nice gasket. As you can see now, all the gubbins is down below. I can put four fixings in there. You can either nut and bolt this. However, I've got a nice solid wooden floor, so I'm gonna screw into the wood on them four fixings. We've now got the electrical here and the fuel pipe here. What we then have is the air in and the exhaust. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the heat proof sleeve in on this piece here, and then we're gonna fit the air in one way and we're gonna fit the exhaust the other way effectively all we're doing um, by pointing them in different directions is if you're sat on tick over parked up overnight or something like that last thing you want to be doing is drawing the exhaust fumes from the diesel heater back into the air that's coming in that won't go into the vehicle it's just not going to run well that is a common thing where people think oh well it's it's sucking in the air from the exhaust it's going to poison you no the chambers are two separate parts but i'll let you argue about that so this is the most zoomed in thing in the world but basically as you can see here we've got the turret coming through the airbox out of the way and then we've got the diesel heater we've put the shroud on we don't really need it because there's nothing to protect from however why not it's there it's a nice touch so that comes down round 
we've bolted to the bodywork here and a nice little kink down and out and away to atmosphere so from the outside all you can see just there is the tip whether it's the air intake or the exhaust please 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 make sure that they are going downhill constantly because the last thing you want to do is get some road spray or go through a big puddle or wading or something like that and the water's going to collect and go down in and just hold uh, even worse go up and then get into the chamber where all the burns done and all the rest of it because you're going to get failure so now that the bit underneath's done, I think that's the worst bit, uh, and it's bolted down, it's a case of plug and play for the electrical cables, which couldn't be easier because there's only one way you can do it. It's that easy. There's plenty on the cables themselves, so don't worry about that too much. The only cable that is quite short is for the controller, but you can get extension leads for that. So again, it's a non-issue. This one here, is for the controller which don't get me wrong i'm going to route this better when the cupboard's in that goes up and behind the units that way you've got this one here which is the longest cable on earth so you're just going to put that on the end of there they'll leave that off so you can get it through the rubber grommet um, it's nice and long because if you're having the fuel pump and everything under the vehicle it may need to be long i'm keeping all mine really really close so that's going to get chopped down short Okay, so that's that one out of the way, that's that one out of the way, and then you've got this one here, which is your power. Again, plug in just there, you've got your fuse there, and you've got your ring outlets there, which are going to go on your battery. How easy is that? If you're not confident, there is no end of installers out there that will fit this for you. Um, it's it's going to be a couple hundred quid or what have you, because it's going to take them a while. But, if you are halfway competent with the spanners, I won't say this is too daunting and at this point of the installation you'll see very very quickly all them parts all them baggies and everything else like that is reduced down to not a lot we've literally got left a little bit of pipe that was excessive a couple of mounting brackets which you may want to fit you may not want to fit some extra bolts and things the fuel pickup for the tank which i'm going to use an external tank then we've got these few little fittings here for the fuel but they're going to go onto my tank and don't forget, in the description box down below, there is a discount code for these, so you get 5% off of it, which that adds up. And as well as that, I get a little drink off of it. So support yourself with some good kit and support the channel at the same time as a bit of a thank you for putting the time into this stuff. Right, so fast forwarding on a little bit, we got rained off as always. But now I went over to see Liam at the Adams Overland and the cupboard that I was doing, we have now got the battery in, we've got the DC-DC charger in, the solar's ready for me to get some solar panels, so I'm going to look at um, some flexible solar panels for the roof, I want big ones, so let me know what you think on that one, because there's a variety. Um, got the inverter sat in place, and basically all this box where it needs to be. We've got the last bits all plumbed up now, and at the minute, for the Patreon meet last weekend, um, I don't know if you saw on the other socials, uh, me and the Patreons went out to check out a site because we're looking at putting a big open meet on. So I put this one, it was a lovely touch, because Auto Term actually sent me a load of this piping down, I thought I'd bake the little one, so I ran it along the floor, up the ladder and into the uh, pop top, so she was baking all, last, all, all the other night. But the best thing was, while we're there, because it dropped cold, everybody had the heaters on, and wow, what I did notice was, this silencer is far quieter than any other silencer that I've had on any diesel heater and like Jake had his um, Chinese diesel heater on and it was like a, a loud talking volume uh, right you know right next to you whereas this even when he's turned off you could barely hear the whisper of this one so fantastic the other thing that I was always worried about is my head goes at this end of the bed here obviously my fuel pump is down in this bottom corner it is silent I didn't hear a single click, a single tick, anything like that. So, happy days. What we're going to do now is, I've got Tony helping me, is we're going to replace the splash back in the kitchen with a bamboo one to match the worktop. Reason being is obviously I've had the old diesel heater and things like that were cut into the old splash back. So, we're going to mount the comfort controller that we've got because you can get a standard controller or a comfort controller well worth paying a little bit extra to get the comfort controller because it gives you features like um, a seven day on and off 
kind of timer you know what you'd have in your house so if you go to work at seven o'clock every morning you can set this to come on at 6 30 every morning you're getting into a warm vehicle every morning happy days it's also got it so you can set it to temperature so unlike a lot of other heaters when it gets to temperature they'll just go down to tick over which is usually still too much whereas this will actually shut down and come back in when needed the other it, it does a million other options as well uh, the other thing that i did notice is you can set it to a temperature but also a timer because mistakenly i actually set it to three hours and in the middle of the night it went cold real fast so clicked that back on and got toasty warm again so it is programmable so we'll have a look at that another little job done gonna get um a few of the stickers on here when we get a few more bits wired in that's for the uh inverter that's the energy control to give live updates of what's going on with the electrical system and now absolutely buzzing with the new heating system so like i said before there is a discount code available and i think there might even be a better offer on than the five percent it may even be 15 percent for the first 50 people so if you are interested in a new heater there you go a nice bit of kit for yourselves and yeah i'm, I'm absolutely chuffed with it we have got some epic freezing cold winter camps coming along so you're going to see some hostile environments and we're going to absolutely thrive in it and that's what it's all about